Here. This little nest. No big deal. Buried in there I'm cutting. Could have caught fire. Babe. Here. You take this for me? No. You take this for me? No. Why? Because it's a nest. It's not a nest. No. It's not a nest. Okay. I promise it's not a nest. Well, what am I going to do with it? Throw it away. <sighs> See what I have to do with Welcome back to the chop shop. We get some shit done on Sandy, believe it or not. I am freshly back from Jess Bronco Graveyard. Floor pans, motor mounts for later. I got my uh, floor braces. And getting ready to tackle a project that I've been dreading since I realized how bad the floors are. But real quick, one project I did do, not on camera, is I went ahead and just did my uh, drip edge trim real quick. This was another project that, uh, to be honest, I was kind of fearful of and dreaded. These took me like five minutes a piece. Literally just made sure that uh, I lined up this piece right here and I started front and work my way and there's this little hump right here you can probably see where it's a little bit wider and that fights it a little bit but once you get past that you can clip this top piece on the top and kind of just snap everything down and it doesn't really fight you at all it was uh surprisingly easy but um, like i said i got floor pans so you can guess what the project is we're getting ready to, to tackle here because Ouch. Ouch. And I gotta get this seat out of here because there's more ouch underneath of it. And there's even more ouch underneath this because this is actually a patch panel on top of an even worse floor. I already have the patch panel out of the passenger side because they had done the same thing on that side. But the floor isn't, I mean, that's bad, but it's not that bad right there. So I was curious of how bad it would have been when they did it back in the day. But since I got entire floor sections, I'm going to replace entire floor sections. I'm not just going right over them, scabbing them in the way that they did. But uh, let's get the seat out of here and assess our situation. So got the seat situation out and you can see what we're left here unless we're going to uh, Flintstone it around town, which I don't intend to do. This isn't gonna work. Uh, I Wish I had seen this one's not that bad The floor support on the driver's side is actually pretty bad and I was driving this thing a lot like a lot a lot um, And there was just They looked like they were aftermarket panels that had been previously done, but they were just screwed right over this. Um, again, I'm not doing it this way. I'm gonna cut probably, I don't know, as much as I have to out of here to be completely into good metal. Um, I'm probably gonna have to do some replacing through here. I do have my little Harbor Freight brake. It's probably gonna get put to work doing that. Like I said, and I've got my braces, which on this side I may not have to do. That one's kind of rough. I do have it but it's gonna mean coming up into here, I feel. But back here, like I said, it's gonna suck. That's gonna suck, because I am very novice when it comes to metal shaping and stuff. But, I guess I'm just gonna cannonball into this like I do everything else. All right, so a bajillion screws later, there's a couple oddball Lags in here. That should be all it's holding the floor in. I think 
I did break just one screw. So that's kind of what I hold on to something on this way out. But, as far as I can see, I think that's all of this floor. We got a pry bar. There's some goo in there holding it. Let go. Let go of my ego. Slice my hand open on this rust. Hey bro, I heard you like floorboards. So I put a floorboard under a floorboard under a floorboard under a floorboard. Ew. I'm getting wet. We got a window leak somewhere. Alright, well. Real quick guys, I don't know if you can hear them in the background. But we got little chicky chickies. We got little chicky chickies. Whoop whoop. Anyway. Here's the situation. I do believe the patch panels I got come clear to up here. And that's probably about, I'm probably going to replace most of it. If anything, I'm going to cut like right here because this is, this is good metal. I do believe the pans come all the way up to here. I don't know. There's another little piece right here. Out now. And more stuff. And this is what I was talking about. Like this is this is my floor support. This is where I sit. Uh, so we're for sure replacing that. And I need to do some work there. Oh yep, right there. Which I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. A big deal. Hey, I've been looking for this. Yes. Anyway, that's our situation. Uh, other side, obviously, same way. Just kind of some oddball dips. Is it kind of it dips this way and this way at the same time, and then? drops this plate of time to this as well. Up here, might get away with just doing some simple 90s and patching this in. And again, it's, it's, you know, it's a ratty truck. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to look cool and work. And that's really all we're going for. Looking cool and working. Ooh, ADHD. Uh, shout out to Alan, a subscriber. These are some 57 Fairlane taillights. As I had mentioned in the video when I brought this car home, I thought doing some Fairlane, a 57 Fairlane fins on it would be cool. He happened to have a set of taillights. And I'm probably gonna have to acquire some buckets that go behind them, I think. These are just mocked up. But, uh, fuck yeah. That looks so, so good. I love it. So, we're definitely gonna run with at least 57 Fairlane taillights. If I can acquire maybe a fin section here, I might try to make some shit happen, but that's later. Let's get this cleaned up and get my floor pans laid out and get a genuine plan of attack. Because like I said, I'm kind of nervous about doing this. Alright guys, this is the next day. I, uh, I acquired just a headache that was just kicking my ass all day. And I thought I was going to fight through it and I was wrong. Uh, there was no way I was firing up sawzalls and cutting wheels and everything. Still kind of fighting it. Anyway, anyway, 
Uh, I kind of have like a half-assed game plan, I think. Um, this, for the most part, fits in there. Um, what the previous people have done, I just cut like little slots in it to make it fit over, basically. I think what I'm going to do is probably cut probably all along just under where they drilled their holes. Because this is... This is some sort of tacky stuff they used to probably to make a seal, but it made quite a line. Like if I uh, if I fit this in here and knock that all down, it'll basically form to this. So I'm thinking maybe clean this up real nice, drill holes in that, knock it to shape, and uh, spot weld it in place. Thinking I'm gonna cut. Can you see it? Maybe come through right here. Cut that out and. That'll be about it. Um, worst case, you know, if I decide to not overlap and spot weld, maybe I, when I knock that into shape a little bit more, I'll end up cutting the rest of that out and butt welding it. But um, without further ado, I am going to battle through the headache that I still do have. I'm going to cut this floor out, at least this side. you'd call it as you see I just kind of cut around the line just like I said I would and I'm just doing going a uh, inch down from what the previous mark was for now uh, basically just to get this out of the way like I said but uh, there is another pan underneath this pan um, and it looks like there's just a few uh, spot welds in there that are holding this boy in place and I think there might be another little spot right there that I might have to battle with. But, um, to be honest, I want to listen to some music. And you're not going to be able to see that anyways. So when I come back, I'll have that out of there. So I've been whittling away a little bit. Just trying to get the stuff to spot well put down. And we found this little nest. No big deal. Buried in there, I'm cutting, could have caught fire. Babe! Here, you take this for me? No. You take this for me? No. Why? It's, it's not a nest. No. It's not a nest. Okay. I promise it's not a nest. Okay. What am I gonna do with it? Throw it. See what I have to deal with. Alright, guys, so I just wanted to show you a little tip. I know they make a tool for this, but what I have good luck doing is, like I said, these little spot welds. This one's about to pop, anyways. It looks like there's another one. About right here-ish. What I'll do is I'll normally smack my pry bar up in behind here. Or not. But then I'll just come in here with my little Harbor Freight step bits. Minimal so that's two of them. 
with just a Harbor Freight step bit. And look, I'm not going through the metal on the bottom. So I'm gonna be able to reuse that. So this time when we come back, I promise all this is gonna be out. So as you can see, the floor is out and I have kind of half-assed trimmed the floor pan. I didn't bring it along with it. It was just, I'll just show you here in a second. And I did that right here on the ground, no fancy tools, angle grinder. And that's all I've taken off thus far. But uh, if you come in, where we are, this is where I decided to make my cuts. And I'm probably gonna end up cleaning this up. I'm probably leaving that in. And I'll show you why here in a moment. But uh, it looks like I'm gonna have to replace, I mean, most of this. I mean, which just sucks, but whatever. But I mean, I kinda got lucky where I'm stopping replacing right here because this lip stops right here. So there was just some silicone and I don't even know if there was actually a spot weld in there or not. But uh, I may or may not pull this out. I think it's just that one bolt. If it's just that one bolt, I'm going to probably pull it out and clean it up. But uh, you see where the spot welds were on this? This is going to need to be cleaned or straightened up one way or another because I am going to leave it in there. That's a, a brace for the floor. But speaking of the floor, like I said, I just cut... I used a line that was on the floor, which is obviously on this floor too, as a reference of where I wanted to cut this one. And I left myself extra. Let me get my leg out of the way here. And you saw how we didn't really want to fit that well earlier, but now with the metal out of it, or the, yeah, the old metal out of it, it uh, fits. Very well. I mean, you can see it's tight around. I mean, just a little bit of pressure and it stays all the way around. All that I've done thus far is just a little ball peen hammer. And I came through and I just kind of, because this went straight up right here, as well as this piece right here. All I've done through, duh, puh, done is come through with my little ball peen, just this little small part. And then I just did a little bit of. Very light, but uh, larger diameter blows with my uh, sledge there. And I'll come back through and, you know, I, I would just kind of bang it along on it. And I was like, I should probably start recording again. Remember that I'm no pro and this is my first time doing this, which is why I'm kind of documenting it. It'll help me do the other side as well. So hopefully it's helpful to some other people. All right, guys. So it's the next day and I got a fresh coat of the Rust-Oleum Primer. <laughs> And then a coat of the black on it as well. I got just a little chicky chicky hanging out with me. But uh, I decided just to trim off just the rusty section of the pan. <clears throat> and so I wire wheeled everything up into the rocker. All the way through here. And then, you know, the frame the best that I could. And then, like I said, I just, uh, Two coats of primer, two coats, of, I just got my first coat of the black on right now. And I have cut out as much metal as I think I'm gonna have to. And I'm gonna cheat and probably not even have to use. I can't believe he's just hanging out out there. Chicka chicka, chicka chicka, yeah. But uh, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna take this bar clamp it on each side there and there and then use it as a level to 
to make my mark for the piece that I need to cut. Another thing I have done, if you may have noticed, is I've got the floor sport cut out of the way. And instead of replacing the entire section, and I didn't cut much off, just this much, that's all I took off. But what I'm gonna end up doing, just much like this panel, is overlapping. So I just had to trim this just a little bit so it tucks up into my rocker here. And then the reason I had to cut the top section off was because that kind of it butted up against the curve and didn't let it fit in here right. But literally I'm just gonna overlap these two panels. I'm gonna clean this back up real nice so I can weld on it. And I'm gonna probably burn a hole or two in this so I can weld them. So I have a weld most of the way down through here and then probably like four little holes or maybe one or two big holes. And then this just had one small weld right there is all that supports that floor. Boom. So, so we got the uh, floor brace in and it's all welded and you know painted and everything. And then, like I had previously stated, just use that rod to you know give us my, my eyeballs something to level the cost and this is just two pieces of scrap that I already had to bend in them I already had holes in them and there's just a bunch of tack welds going across here at this point in time I'm gonna wiggle that in place I think what I want I want to do is I'm just gonna take a handful of self tapping screws to kind of hold this in place Kind of knock it down flat where it matches the contours. And I'm probably going to clean this up and tack it in. Did what I said I was going to do. Went through and tacked everything in. I basically came and like sat on this thing. Like so. Put forward pressure on it. Got some tacks in here. And as I tacked I just took my little ball peen hammer. And just I'd hit like two or three tacks. And I just knock it down. Two or three tacks knock it down. Two or three tacks knock it down. And slowly but surely, I did end up needing uh, to pull that way. So I ended up having to take out a couple of the self tap, or just one of the self tappers that I had. And that let me do that corner. But now, even with the hammer, I can't get this to go down. So I'm going to have to either remove a section or just make a, a relief cut or two. Get that rest of the way down. And uh, we'll get that last little panel in there. But guys, check this. Like, my truck's never been that solid. <laughs> Couple relief cuts made. Like I said, let that drop down. And then this little panel that I used for pinstripe practice and to make a couple straight edge lines. And it's probably now about to get repurposed with... The only spot that I had left to do, which is just right here, because ironically, it just kind of, it's about the right size, I mean, because this needs to overlap right here, and I'm going to have to do, you know, there's a bend right here, and then kind of a swoop right here, so I'm probably going to have to, I might have to break out my brake, I might have to break out my brake anyways, but... Let me see what I can make happen with this panel. Check this out. I'm actually uh, quite happy. You know, for just a random piece of metal I had laying around. And you know, as I bent it, and kind of worked it into shape and kind of hammered it down, I lost a little bit of uh, metal right here. So I gotta do some makeup there and I gotta cut this little piece right here. Some little filler pieces where I had to let some relief cuts in. Little tack welds, I gotta go through and you know a bajillion more of those and knock them down. And then I'll come through here with probably some sealer. Um, more particularly on the bottom, I'll probably hit it with a nice heavy sealer, as well as you know rust proof, uh, rust inhibiting paint. And it'll probably get some sort of like rubberized coating on the bottom of it. But um, I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm gonna go in and clean up, make some food. Probably jump back out here tomorrow and do a bajillion tack welds to grind that all down and maybe get a little coat of uh, rust inhibiting paint on it. So I know that earlier in the video I said that I wasn't gonna completely finish this 
I may have lied to you. Because, uh, you know, after I knocked out this side, you know, I couldn't help but to knock out this side, which, you know, I had to do all the same things. And then, come in here, and also, I had to replace all of this, as well as even the, uh, the floor support under that piece, I had to replace a section of. But as you can tell, I'm pretty much done. Uh, I'm going to do a layer of black on this as well. Uh, I didn't finish the uh, transmission tunnel square. Uh, this has been converted to a floor shape. It was originally a uh, three on the tree. Um, I'm going to mock my transmission up in there and see if I need to, can to, whatever, need to make that smaller. Uh, I'm not quite ready for that yet, so I'm going to work pretty much up to that. All right, guys, are you ready? Sorry, celebratory beers. Really excited. This, as you can tell, was a really, really big project of the truck. In fact, like one of the biggest of the three, like floorboards, the bed floor, and like the frame notch, and the engine, which is next. As you know, that's been to the machine shop and everything. It just has to go in again, get my heads done, Pins pressed for the pistons and everything, but uh, let's check this out. Ooh. Now, I did run shy of material, I ran out, and again, I'm not finishing this area right here because I need I want to test stab my transmission and see where my shifter actually comes through. So, I'll probably end up making that hole a little bit smaller, or maybe even just leaving it alone and just sealing it right in the way that it is. But, um, the tape that I got was insanely cheap. I pulled off like six inches of it and I was like, I ain't fucking using that. Uh, so I'm gonna have to get some better tape. But um, this, uh, shout out to Kevin Masters actually of the uh, museum episode. And I had thought about doing this myself, but was not 100% sure. Uh, I know it's not uncommon for people to use um, like construction materials in their vehicles. But this insulation is actually insulation for ductwork. And again, I said I had to thought myself but according to him, this stuff is actually manufactured in the same factory as Boom Mat. Forgive my couple bag cuts right there. We'll cover that up with foil tape. No big deal. But I didn't even buy the roller. I just used my hands, as you can tell by the the silver on them. But um, got my little trim pieces, and there's you know there's rubber that goes all the way up around here. So this is you know it's not fitting right, and it's just sitting there. But, uh, hell yeah, I'm so excited. And price wise, guys, this stuff, and again, I've seen Boom Mat or Kill Mat, whatever, I've held it in my hand. That's the exact same stuff. I promise you, that's the exact same stuff. And I'm gonna get another roll, like I said. I ran a little bit shy for like three rolls, the tape. I'm probably gonna have like. 80 90 bucks and doing my entire floor up into the firewall I'm gonna do my doors. I'm gonna do the back of the cab and I'm gonna do probably just like a Small strip or something on the ceiling. I might have to get a fourth roll, but I'm only gonna be into this at most a hundred bucks and That's probably about half the price of killing boom mat for the exact same stuff so uh save yourself the money and just go to the hardware store and check that stuff out and uh let's run over here real quick this is all that's left to the floor all that cutting and hacking is just there's a small little pile of stuff the chicky chickies chicky chickies <laughs> but uh man that is exciting man um uh, next episode uh, I'm going to jump on an actual attack list for this thing. Uh, in fact, I'm probably going to title the episode The List. Because I'm driving this damn thing this year. And we're getting real close. I mean, just, you know, the list real quick is, you know, rear end needs to come back out and get, you know, the gaskets and actually assembled. Bed needs bolted down. Uh, engine needs finished. Wiring gas tank. I do want to, and I have, I think, all the material except for basically the cushion and the, the uh, 
actual like fabric material I want to use, but I have some, plexi some plexiglass uh, panels that I'm going to use to redo my door panels. I'm going to do those. I'll custom one off. But, uh, man, it's going to look cool with that Hearst shifter. A Hearst shifter and my little Rebel IPA. Shift knob sticking through that floor. Ooh, dang, I'm excited. I still got to find the new seat because that one's, that one's pretty roached. So, that's another thing we got to conquer, but, you know, it doesn't stop me from driving it. I drove it like hell with the seat like that, and I'll drive it like hell with the seat like that again. But, uh, pa -pa -pa -pa. man. That's it, guys. Yep. Come over here and give her just one more once over. Come in the back door this time. Is that good to your mom? Oh, that's exciting. And I sat in here and watched some YouTube and listened to some music a little bit earlier. And uh, the acoustics in here are quite well. So I can imagine you know, when I get the door or the ceiling back and there's actually a, a window in this thing. And uh, speaking of, when the weather actually gets probably into like the 70s or a little bit higher, I actually found a guy like five minutes from my house willing to do my back window for me. So I need to get the seal ordered for that. And then the interior will be done. Like, done, done. Because I don't even know if it's going to get any other floor besides maybe like a factory rubber mat. But other than that, that floor is done. Besides getting taped. Like, that's it. I'm not fancy. This is a rat rod I'm going to drive and beat the crap out of. But, um, that's it. Like, subscribe, share, tell your mom, your dad. I'm not really into your dad, so mainly tell your mom. But, uh, it's out. If that's out, I'm out. Deuces.